Hello everybody. The Kings of Summer is a really good movie. It features some incredible acting work, an extremely well-made storyline, a unique soundtrack, and it's really, really funny. So it ticks all of the boxes. Like most of the films I really like, I've watched this thing probably about six times. The Kings of Summer is a hilariously accurate depiction of the stereotype teenage boy. A lot of films try too hard to achieve this and end up falling into the How do you do, fellow kids? category. The main character is called Joe. Who is Joe, you might ask? Joe Mama! <laughs> Joe lives in a house with his dad, who he hates, and even though his dad loves him, they still act passive-aggressive towards each other. And much like this stereotyped teenage boy, he doesn't really care about school that much. He puts his social status above all. He has a best friend called Patrick, who is also a typical teenage boy, and as you would expect, he has an ambitious side to him, which gives him the need to achieve something great. Joe is the ideal main character for a film like this, because he has all of the morals that a good person would have, but he's still just an average guy keeping his head down through high school. The film starts with Joe going to school and handing in his late assignment before the school closes for summer. Then Joe is asked to go to a party with some girl he likes, and then some people rip his shirt off. As you can probably imagine, the girl he likes actually has a boyfriend causing complication right away. However, when Joe gets home, he's not allowed to go to the party because his dad Frank insists on him staying to meet his new partner. Meanwhile, we also see Patrick at his house with his embarrassing parents. Often, eat the hamburger and then the fries, you don't, you don't mix it up? I don't know, Dad. Just ask him. I think showing the characters with their parents is a very quick and very clever way to build the characters. We get to see what their home life is like, and how much they can tolerate their parents. In both cases, not at all. So after Joe's dinner with his dad's new girlfriend, they play Monopoly as an old tradition they once had. I personally think this is one of the funniest scenes in the film because we get to see how pathetic and aggressive Joe and his dad are with each other. You go to Tottenville, are you on any teams? Carol, before we go any further, you should know. Frank is not my real father. I love him and I owe him a lot. You know, he's very special to me, but he's not my blood. Is that true, Frank? That's completely untrue. After losing the game of Monopoly, Joe Prank calls the police on his dad for theft, which is apparently something that he does often. Oh, he's doing it! <laughs> Joe! Joe! Yeah, I'd like to report a theft. The problem with Joseph's habit is that one day there will be an actual emergency or violent crime coming from this house. Yeah, well, the night is still young. And even though Joe was sent to his room, he had successfully ruined his dad's chances with his new girlfriend. Then Joe tragically kills himself with a water gun. <gasps> Oh wait, no, I guess he's still alive, and he's sneaking off to the party. This is an important scene, because this is where he meets Biagio, who is soon to become an important character. He has a shadow behind his eyes. How long have you been standing there? Hello? In the middle of all this, the landowner where the party took place told everyone kindly to leave by firing a gun at them. Everybody starts running in all directions while Joe and Biagio make a run for it into the woods. Biagio is a really strange character who Joe wasn't a huge fan of at first, but he came to like him more when they were cluelessly running around in the woods together. This is when Joe feels his first encounter with freedom. And then Biagio is all, Dude, what are you doing? And then Joe is all, Nothing bro, let's go. And then they find their way home. Joe then receives a phone call from the girl he likes, and his dad snatches the phone off him and makes an epic gamer move. Is this Patrick? Kelly? Kelly, a girl. Jesus, that's a pleasant surprise. Dad. Listen, Kelly, Joe can't talk right now because he's grounded. He will call you back sometime before his hot new bedtime of 7.30. You have a good night. At this point, Joe is completely out of patience with his dad, so he meets Patrick and Biagio in the woods and suggests that they build a house in the forest together and live there. Biagio and Joe were totally up for it, but Patrick wasn't too keen at first. Later that day, Patrick decided that he couldn't take living with his parents anymore. So you wore the blue shirt today, not the one with the pocket? Got the blue one. Yeah. Whoa. Rope in the attitude, mister. This come is your on, mother buddy. you're speaking to. Come on. Huh? Huh? Oh Sorry, Dad. Who was he doing a show for? Huh? Oh my gosh. Either I know. Girls? It's like he's on camera. Are there girls around? Yeah, there must be. Oh, oh. <laughs> so he calls Joe and tells him that he's up for the plan. The following day, the three bros head out into the forest and prepare the land for building, and Biagio comes up with an excuse for their disappearance when they all move out. You made this? I did. It took very little time. Very few days. 
My name is Jamal Colorado, and I have kidnapped your son. He is unharmed and will stay that way if you abide by the following rules. Jamal, Colorado. Ann Fernie, Texas. Deshaun, Utah. Yeah, I decided on the format of Denzel Washington, a black first name followed by a state. In the next scene, things move pretty quickly with a building montage which features The Youth by MGMT, which is a really good song. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> The day after that, the three bros go to the house so they can spend their first night there. Okay. Alright, let's unpack. Ah! I came early. You can tell that Joe and Patrick are finally experiencing the freedom they've always wanted, and they're much happier now. Of course, they haven't exactly mastered living in the wild, but they seem happy and that's all that really matters. However, meanwhile, their parents have reported their disappearance to the police, resulting in the beginning of an investigation. Patrick's parents thought it was a kidnapping, even though it obviously wasn't. You're right, it's a classic kidnapping. They took our children and the canned goods and pasta. All right, look, I hate to admit it, but Frank is right. Right now, we have to assume that these are voluntary disappearances. The three bros packed enough canned food to last them a while, but they decided that they should start hunting their own food to preserve the canned goods. Although Joe and Biagio couldn't catch anything, so they just went and bought food. Meanwhile, Joe's dad, Frank, isn't dealing with losing his son too well, and he realizes that even though he finds his son annoying, he still loves him and stuff. Joe is the one who tied Patrick's pet turtle to a kite, wanted to send him up into space. I forgot about that. Are you laughing? Are you laughing at that? It was it was more of a laugh of admiration. This gives us a whole new perspective on Frank, because to begin with, he seemed like a doesn't care at all kind of guy, but now he seems like a cares quite a lot kind of guy. Later that night, Joe and Patrick decide that they should have a few friends round to the house, even though that would be breaking the rules they had set for themselves at the beginning. One of the people that they had invited round actually happened to be the girl that Joe liked, and it was around this time that the girl had just broken up with her boyfriend. How convenient. During the evening where they had friends round, there was a girl there that had a thing for Biagio, however nothing happened between the two of them for some reason. I think he's making eyes at you, man. Go talk to her. Look at it. She's so into it. There's no point in me talking to her anyways. Why not? Joe. I'm gay. Are you sure? Um... Yes. My lungs fill up with fluid every time the seasons change. That's not being gay, Biagio. What? Pretty sure that's cystic fibrosis. Oh. Also during that evening, we see the girl that Joe likes is actually into Patrick, and that's a violation of the bro code, so shame on you, Patrick. But this leads Joe to not only devolve into a caveman, but to become angry at Patrick, and this is best shown during their game of Monopoly. <laughs> Realtor, can I please get three hotels? Oh, yeah, sure. On what? Orange. Or I just bought. There you go, property manager. What's up, Joe? Nothing's up. It's your role. Look, Joe, if I roll a six, an eight, or a nine, things are gonna get very bad in here. Joe also gets pretty mad at the girl and ruins his chances with her by calling her a well, I don't really wanna say it, but let's just say it rhymes with switch. Then the girl leaves and Actually, I'm tired of calling her the girl, alright? Her name is Kelly, so from now on, all the characters are gonna get called by their names. So when Kelly leaves, Joe also kicks Patrick and Biagio out, and if he wants to kick Patrick out, that's fine, I guess, he has a reason for it. But Biagio didn't deserve it. He may be weird, but he's got a heart of gold. Patrick finds his way back home and realizes that his parents, while being annoying, still really care about him. Biagio, on the other hand, was caught by the police and was brought in for questioning about where the house was. But obviously, Biagio, being such a loyal friend, he kept his mouth shut about it. This kid is in my head. 
Later that night, with Joe being home alone in the house, he sits down to have his dinner, which he actually hunted himself. But before he could get one bite in, a snake pulls up and backs him into the corner. Meanwhile, Biagio and Kelly collectively decided that they should go back to the house and make sure Joe is safe. Kelly also brought Joe's dad, Frank. When they go in and see that he's about to get eaten by a snake, Biagio proves his loyalty once again by chopping the snake in half. However, this resulted in Biagio getting bitten and rushed to the hospital. Luckily, Biagio wasn't badly injured and Joe had some time to clean himself up in a hospital bathroom. Joe and Kelly managed to get back on good terms, but when Patrick showed up, he and Joe didn't get along too well. However, on the ride back home with their cars being right next to each other, they bond over flipping each other off and becoming best friends once again. And that, my friends, was The Kings of Summer. Obviously, you would probably enjoy the actual film more than me talking about it, so please, please do yourself a favour and go check it out. I think the main reason that this film is so great is because of how well it appeals to its demographic. Obviously, very few teenagers have actually gone out and done something like this, but for many people, moving into a house with your childhood friends would be a teenage dream come true. And I think the house they built was a great representation of emerging adulthood. Sure, they thought they were ready and it was what they wanted, but there was so much to it they didn't know about, so they decided to stay teenagers until they were ready. Anyway, that's just my interpretation of it all. I'm very open to suggestions on what you think the house represents, and as always, I'll be replying to every single comment, so thank you for watching, and have a nice day.